year. And uh, first item on the agenda, I would like to take an, a motion for the approval of the minutes from our last meeting of November 5th. So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Our policy calendar has four items on the agenda. I will now turn it over to Iris. Thank you. To go um, so the first item is a, uh, a, a lease amendment at 5030 Broadway. Um, and this is on behalf of Hostos Community College and the Borough of Manhattan Community College. Um, and it would authorize to um, add to a lease amendment uh, 3,700 square feet um, to the space that we already have in this location. I think as uh, this committee remembers, we brought this item, I guess, about a year and a half ago. Um, we were desperately looking for new space um, in Washington Heights for CUNY in the Heights. Um, the space that we were in originally was owned by the Catholic Church and it was not ADA compliant, there was no air conditioning, and so we were very fortunate to find this space at 5030 Broadway. Um, it turns out that the landlord had an additional 3,700 square feet at the corner, which he had hoped um, uh, to use for commercial space, but that never panned out, and he came back to us and offered us the space, um, and I know that both Ostos and, and BMCC have put this space to great use. Um, there are classes happening there all the time. I believe that they have been in a partnership for about eight years now up at that site. And so uh, this additional space will just add to the academic activity up in Washington Heights. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the second item um, is, a, uh, is an item for LaGuardia Community College, um, and it's the relocation of the Humanities Office. Um, we are doing a major project for a library expansion at LaGuardia. This is in Center 3. In order to do that, we need to move the Humanities Department to other space. And we will be accepting uh, the work that has been performed by the architects on this project, APA, um, uh, in terms of designing out the new space for the Humanities Department. So those, those are the two items. Fantastic. Are there any questions on the first two resolutions? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jay Weiser, uh, Luke uh, College. Just how does uh, uh, how does the per square foot cost on the LaGuardia office space compare to what we've been doing generally in office renovations? And I, and I should say it looks like it's quite a reasonable cost. But are you talking about LaGuardia? You're yeah, talking LaGuardia. About, uh, LaGuardia. Um, it, it's it's Sorry. within the scope of of how we build out the space. Okay. So it's not exorbitant by no, any stretch. No, I, I, as I say, it's any it's stretch the of the amendment. <coughs> yes, we're doing just fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the first two items? Nope. Should we vote on these two first? Okay. Um, I will take a motion to accept the first two uh, policy item items. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We will now move on to the presentation. Thank you. Um, I think as this committee knows, over the last uh, few years, we've been um, rather in in enthused in our department to be able to bring to the committee uh, projects that are in the uh, design phase uh, of their life. And um, today we are going to bring two projects which we have really worked very hard and long on. Um, and in particular, we've worked with uh, two architecture firms that have done quite a lot of work for CUNY. Um, we had a great fall. We opened up uh, four new buildings. The fifth um, will be open very shortly, which is the new uh, child daycare center at Bronx Community College. Um, all those projects started out um, previously in this phase of, of design. Um, and so, um, uh, we are really thrilled to be able to share these projects uh, with this committee and with the university as a whole. So the first project we're going to talk about is a, um, a new building out at York College. It's going to be an academic and student services building. Um, through an RFP process, we selected ENIAD Associates as the architect. And uh, as I said, they've done a lot of work for CUNY over the years. Um, for those of us who um, uh, lived through the uh, Medgar Evers building. We know the long journey it took us to get that building completed. Um, ENIAD was uh, the architects for that building. 
They have also been selected um, by the consortium of uh, Sloan Kettering and CUNY uh, to design our new uh, science building for Hunter at East 73rd Street. Um, they were the architects for um, uh, Roosevelt House at, at Hunter College. Um, and uh, lastly, um, they were selected to design the new uh, Colin Powell Center at uh, CCNY. So this is a firm that we have had um, a very good uh, relationship with. Let me just say that when we uh, went through the process of looking for an architecture firm at York <coughs> College, um, one of the things that we specified is that we wanted a firm that could come up with pizzazz. Um, for those of us who have visited the York campus, um, it doesn't have a lot of pizzazz. Um, and so we felt that we needed a, an iconic building and one that not only spoke to the college community, but spoke to the community of Jamaica as well. And uh, I just want to thank the architects because we have worked uh, very diligently with the college community as well as the community. We've been out there, we've had tons of meetings, a lot of input, and I believe what you're about to see today is a pretty spectacular building. So I'd like to introduce um, uh, the lead architect on this project, um, uh, Todd uh, Schleeman, and uh, Todd was the lead architect on Medgar Evers as well, so um, we have worked quite a bit with Todd. So, Todd, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, I just want to let everybody know that with pizzazz uh, comes functionality, too. <laughs> yes. So don't yes. just think we're, we're making it an attractive building. Um, yes. Anyway, thank yes. you, Iris. It's been a pleasure to work with, um, with the college and with Iris and her people. Um, and it's, it's been a little bit of a journey, but we think we've gotten to a place that is, um, is pretty spectacular. And the college seems to be very, very pleased. So let's go forward. I think the stage that we're in right now in terms of timing is we've just completed our design development phase. And we are estimating it. As of today, we're on budget. We'll find out, make whatever adjustments we need to make by the end of February, beginning of March, and wrap up wrap up this phase. So let's go forward. So York College, the, um, the site gave us a lot of information about how the architecture needed to situate itself and broadcast, as Iris says, back to Jamaica. One of the, this is Jamaica proper over here. Archer Avenue subway and bus center is right there. Very, very active um, transit hub the end of the E um, line, and then we have the Long Island Railroad, which is a tremendous barrier between the city and the campus. It's a very large, story and a half tall concrete um, rail bed that has a few openings in it that allow you to have access to the other side. And York occupies that other side. Its main building is the academic core. Um, which is a very internalized structure. Then there are several other older buildings, the Performing Arts Center that remarkably we did back in the 80s, um, and then their athletic facilities. One other characteristic of the site is it's very flat. Um, although green, when you come through that tunnel, there is a kind of flatness about it, which is probably not, um, it, it is not actually feeling um, that comfortable. So let's go forward. So what we have done, this is actually the site. There's an existing renovated church on that. The main pedestrian entry through the, um, the uh, sort of tunnel is 159th Street. We've located our building right in the middle of the site, right adjacent to the main entrance to the academic core. Now let's go to the next. And so here's an enlargement of it. Um, it's a very, very simple building. It's about um, nine stories tall. Um, and it is a very, very simple building. And we will talk a little bit about how the landscaping, we've tried to begin to use different topography to break up that flatness um, and use a lot of the green space to, in support of the building itself. Go ahead. So actually, before you run that, on. Um, so the idea that the building can be a beacon for the college, that it can actually represent a kind of aspirational brand 
for York College was very much on our mind. We wanted to create something that could be seen that would rise up above that big concrete <coughs> embankment and so it could link itself across to Jamaica. And we did a, a little video study to see what would happen actually from the railroad itself just to see what kind of a, an impact we could make with this scale of a building. So why don't you just run this? What, what we actually did was we kept thinking, wouldn't it be interesting if the building could <coughs> not just be lit at night, but shimmer as you move around it. So this concept of being able to create a facade that would actually be alive and also one that would be transparent enough so you could see the students inside the building and keep it active, which is just the opposite. We've lost our image. Well, be just the opposite of the academic core, which is very insular, very inward looking, um, and does not open up. Hmm. You're me. Oh, it's on the screen. <coughs> well, in any case. It's on one screen. Too. It's on one screen. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's on one screen. Oh, dear. Well, it can't be his problem. It's going to be our problem. Yeah, but he's got up on his computer. <coughs> can't go on one screen. <coughs> Do you need some lights? <laughs> Why don't we put the lights on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> without his pictures will <laughs> <laughs> work. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the idea, we, the idea that we could create um, a, a building that did shimmer, you know, that's one thing, but we also needed to make sure that it was sound from the standpoint of being cost effective. Also, what, we're, what we'll show you is how the facade itself actually begins to uh, combat solar radiation, can produce that effect, um, but also give you a clear view out. Um, also, the, the techniques that we're using will cut glare because a lot of these classroom spaces need, basically, they all want north light, but the building faces the east and west facades being probably the worst um, in terms of the amount of solar radiation that we are trying to, 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 um, trying to deal with. Aha! So we'll go to the smaller screen. Now you can go forward. <laughs> so, oop, the aspect ratio is funny. Well, we'll just go through this quickly then. Um, the idea here is as you emerge from the um, tunnel at 159th Street, there's the building in front of you. There's a direct path and then towards the entrance to the academic core, but we've sloped the lawn up to the second floor of the building so that you can actually rise up, use the lawn for outdoor activities, as well as pass down 59, 159 and come in from the other side. So let's go to the next. So this is the system of, essentially they're glass fins that we've put on the outside of the building and we've angled them um, according to an energy study that we did that showed the precise angle that we could camp them so that we could shade the facade to cut down on glare. Then we added a dot pattern, a frit <laughs> dot pattern to create the solar screening, which as you move around the building, go ahead, creates, then you can start that video, creates this moiré effect where you, if you have two patterns, one in front of the other, as you move, and students are always moving around the campus, it's not just for the trains, you can begin to see it shimmer and move and have depth. So we have the practical aspect of being able to create sh uh, shade or shadow, um, and then being able to see out, but also get this spectacular kind of shimmering facade. Next. So in terms of what is inside, 
Um, there are, there's public program on the base, and I'll talk about that in a little bit of detail. Then we've put two levels of classrooms above, trying to keep them at the, towards the bottom of the building because of the amount of traffic, student traffic. Then we have student services, which essentially is the registrar and the bursar, and uh, the Tuskegee Institute is there. And then there is one floor of their business school program, primarily offices, and then they would use the classrooms below. And then student um, organizations occupy the top two floors, and then they have a roof deck that's dedicated to the students, to student works. Next. And so, just in general, the ground floor below the landscape base, here's the entrance from 159, the entrance to the academic core. What we've done is we've put an entrance right up opposite the academic core, a large lobby, and then another entry here. So we're encouraging students to walk through the building. On the north side is a cafe and bookstore. South side is a conference center with its own drop-off, loading dock, food facilities, there's a small gallery, um, and an ancillary program. Let's go to the next. And so here is a, a plan of the main entrance right here from the west. Security position, who covers the elevators, can see everything, all doors, um, and is in a very conspicuous position. The stair goes up to the second floor, which has the study lounges, and is, is basically meant to keep the student on the campus for a lot longer, rather than have them go to their class and then immediately go home, so that they can get involved with each other and with the faculty um, and have those productive collisions, we like to say, um, um, that, that creates their education. Next. So here's a little bit of a view of that main entrance with the two-story space, security in the stair up. Next. And here is a, this is the lobby again. Bookstore is back here with frontage, glass frontage along the western side. There's the checkout. This is a courtyard which separates the cafe from the bookstore and also just brings light down into the base. And the cafe looks out towards the east and that is the, um, the servery. The bookstore can be closed off at night, this, then the cafe can do double duty as a study lounge when the food is not being served. Next. And so here is a little bit of a view um, into the cafe. You can actually see outside, we've got tables and chairs <coughs> focused outside. Here's that courtyard bringing in light, and then the bookstore um, just beyond that blue zone. Next. The elevators. We have three elevators which take you up through the building. And the idea here is we want to be able to um, be able to use the elevators to animate the facade, to sort of put a human face on the facade. So the facade is glass, and so are the elevators, which means that as the students go up and down, you will be able to see them traveling, um, traveling up through the building. Next. And stairs. We have a lot of stairs. We're encouraging the students to use the stairs, not the elevators. So we've tried to create um, broad stairs that link um, different parts of the program. Um, we imagine that the classroom floors are, are going to be used, the stairs will be used quite a bit on the classroom floors as well as taking you down to the second floor where all the study space is. Next. Typical classroom floor. Here are the elevators. Here is the stair. Um, toilets and core facility. We have 60 student classrooms and 30 student classrooms. We also have uh, a kind of new prototype for a classroom which we're testing right now. We're building um, an example of it in one of the older classrooms in the academic core to try to perfect it. It's called what they call a flipped classroom where it's, it's focused on group learning where teams of, um, you can go to the next, Teams of um, students gather around with their laptops and there's a, a computer on the wall and then the teacher moves around while they are doing projects. The reason they call it flipped is because it used to be that the teacher would give a lecture in class, you go home and do your project and come back and turn it in. Now the idea is you can go home, see the lecture online or um, do your reading and then when you come into the classroom you do, you do your project. So this is an experiment that that um, we're, we're starting to take a look at and we will hopefully perfect. Next. 
student organization floor. Um, there are actually two of these. These are actually basically workspaces and lounge spaces with storage all the way around the perimeter of the core. These are group work rooms which have wooden floors. They do dance and performances in there. And then some more open work uh, lounge as well as meeting room and study space and little glass boxes around the perimeter. Now here we've also added two courtyards to get light in and then some stairs which take you up one floor. Next. Oh, I'm sorry, this is one of the lounges. The idea is that we would select furniture that could be moved around, could be moved away completely so that they can use this as a, um, as a sort of gathering space. Next. And then the top floor is actually a series of little courtyards and open spaces. There's some work rooms with um, the stairs that go up, an observatory and workspace, and then an observation platform for telescopes, um, etc. Now the idea here is that we wanted to get the students up into the building and get them up as high as possible so that they could see out over Jamaica and over the landscape so that they could, it's like they have a future. They can see their future rather than being kind of pressed down and inside that academic core building, which some have equated with a low security prison, which is about the kind of feel. So we're trying to turn that inside out and create sort of the next, a little bit more vibrancy. Next. And here it is, this is the kind of official rendering. This is the entrance that's across from the academic core. That's the sloped lawn that takes you to the second floor. There's the stairway. Here are the elevators. We're going to start to add color pretty soon. And there you see the rooftop, which is planted. And that is our building. Uh, I, I just, I, I failed to mention at the beginning of Todd's presentation that um, I think as this committee remembers, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, we had brought the new master plan for York to the committee. The programming for this building as is, is a result of uh, that master plan that we had developed. I'd also like to acknowledge Max Pizer is here. He's the assistant director who works on the York project. Bob Lemieux is here. And uh, all of us, um, the architects, the college, and facilities planning, we put a lot of work and thought into this building. And uh, we hope that we're going down the right track. Yes. I was probably asleep when you said it, but what's the energy? Is this green? Is it LED? What's your estimated cost per square foot right now? For the construction? Total, all in. Uh, was that project, co project cost? Project I, I, I'm the architect. I, you, I, you're going to have to tell them what the project right. cost is. Sorry. But we are, we are, let me just say, we are seeking LEED certification as high as we can get. Um, and that's why Todd talked about. Shooting for gold right. is what we're looking for. Talked gold. about yeah. all the energy yeah. features. Yeah. Um, we believe the building will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 290 to 250 million dollars to, to construct. So what's this. that work out per square foot? Uh, how many square feet are in the building? 163,000. Okay, so but that's hard, that. soft, and cost. Know, with, and I'm soft cost, you. right. And, and the exterior, the shifting lights, is, uh, are, is this going to be strictly from nature or are you going to be using LED or No, something? we don't want to use LEDs. The, the, um, what we're doing is it's, it's passive. It's basically totally passive, passive. Yes. totally passive gotcha. system. Um, also, you know, these buildings today, in order to get the gold, are smart buildings. So the lights go off if you're not occupying it. If floors, if people, it senses people's presence on floors. If people are not on a floor, it tamps down the air systems. So we're expecting it to be a fairly efficient. And I, and I missed this. This is a 24 7. Um, I don't know. It's not going to be 24-7. No, not 24-7, but it will they be used. They have late programs. Yeah, I it mean, it will be used on the weekends. It will be used in the evenings. And as Todd pointed out, we're building in a conference center. Our, our desire is to get the community right. onto the campus right. using the building as well on the weekends. What's the size of the conference center? Did you say that to, I'm sorry, it was a uh, 300 people. Yeah, about three, it'll take 300 people in the largest yeah, meeting room, which then is divisible into three. With breakout spaces. Yes. And then there are breakout spaces for 60 or so, which also can double as uh, classroom space, which expands that. 
and they have a, a small food service operation that can serve from the backside. Um, it's a yeah, it's a and it's got its own sort of identity, its own entrance. So if we don't want to mix the students with a conference that's going on, we can, or we can blend the whole the whole thing together. Um, yeah, I, I see there's substantial bookstore space on the first floor, and I know at Baruch there was some discussion. Bookstores like libraries are sort of going through rapid change, and there was some, some conversation at Baruch about whether even there would be a bookstore within three years, and, and how Likewise, are you addressing... Likewise, we had a similar discussion here as well. The college was, the college was rather uh, firm at this point that they wanted to have the bookstore, that there aren't a lot of options for their students in Jamaica, it's hard to just, you know, bop on the subway and hit a Barnes and Noble along the way. Um, if at the time that we go into construction, bookstores are obsolete, um, uh, one thing that we'll be able to do is think about how to reprogram the space. But for now, because of the location of this campus, we agreed with the college that we should have a bookstore on this site. And We've academic, also, ac academic bookstores yeah. would not be obsolete. We've also put it in close proximity to the cafe, <laughs> taking a clue from commercial, you know, <laughs> so, we, you know, it's right. You, you go to Barnes & Noble, you, you get, get coffee, and, you, yeah, read book, right, you, you read know. a book, you read a book, a magazine. already have so a, a, a Starbucks in the main building. They right? do have a Starbucks and there, a was, small uh, one. Yeah, it's tiny, but it's big. Yes. Yeah. Um, quirky question because I've got the pros here. When you were talking about the landscaping, and, and I'm very familiar <coughs> with your college and the barrier that the uh, LIRR viaduct presents, there in the far northwestern corner of the site, mm -hmm. as you get to the viaduct, it seems to me there's sort of a triangular um, yard space mm -hmm. that yes, has got trucks. The, we, we don't own that, obviously. Well, we do Actually, it. I think you do. I think it was part of the street closure. A piece of 159 was closed, two-thirds of it, and that went with it. And that, that's not going to be subject to be re-landscaped, because that is <coughs> so negative in terms of your entrance to York, and I was wondering whether this was going oh, to happen. Yeah. Right now, it's not in the plan. Again, if, you know, if we're lucky... Is that and buildable space? I don't know. I don't think we've done the engineering analysis. But on. it does belong to us. Well, that's good. Yeah. We can do like that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Todd. Thank you. And the whole team. Yeah. Um, I'll take a motion to adopt this resolution. It's the resolution. I don't think there's a resolution. No, this is yeah. a resolution. Yes, the resolution. Oh, okay. yeah. the resolution is I ask no more questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the resolution of questions. <laughs> no, the resolution of, I guess, addressing this in addition to the master plan and all that yeah. stuff. I will take a motion today. Okay, can you tell us what the resolution is on? I, I mean, I'm, I'm not following. It was a great oh, presentation. Okay. It looks like it's a great project, but what's the resolution on, on the floor? This is just a presentation. Okay. Then no resolution. Okay. So we'll go to the next presentation. I just want to say one last thing. You know, all the projects we design we love, um, but only one project can be on the new five-year capital book. And I just want it noted that this York uh, <laughs> building is on our five-year capital uh, book. But wow. we love all the projects right. we've designed. This, so. this looks like it's a good choice. <laughs> you, you know, it's, uh, every year we like to pick a different one, and we chose this one this year. Yeah. So the next presentation, we're switching boroughs um, uh, to Brooklyn. And uh, Carol? Yes. Um, in, in the last um, five-year capital plan that uh, CUNY did, um, we were very fortunate um, to get funding for a new science building out at Brooklyn College. Um, I think as the committee knows, um, it has been the desire of the university um, to take down the old Roosevelt Hall, which had the gym facility in it, and now that gym is now in the West Quad building. And um, as a result of a master plan for Brooklyn College a number of years ago, what became very clear is that more instructional science space was needed at Brooklyn College. So again, we went through an RFP process and uh, we selected the firm of Mitchell Jurgela um, and Carol Lowenson is here. She's a principal of the firm. Uh, Mitchell Jurgela has done a lot of work for CUNY, like ENIAD. Um, they did the design and renovation of Powdermaker Hall out of Queens College. 
as well as they did the design of Remsen Hall um, and also the new infill building at Remsen Hall. And uh, they are working with us at LaGuardia Community College. Um, they designed the eighth floor of Center 3. They also designed the facade of Center 3. And a non-CUNY project that I will talk about is that they designed the new building at Rockefeller University, which I would encourage all of you, if you have an opportunity to walk on that campus and see that building, uh, I'm only sorry that it's so far into the campus that it is hard for people to see it from the street, but I think it's clearly a, a spectacular building, and Mr. Gerbil were the architects for that as well. So with that note, I'm going to turn this over to Carol. Thank you, Iris. Um, hello, everyone. <laughs> All of you over on the west side. <laughs> I guess if the lights are going to go out, although I don't need the lights to go out unless you like the no, lights to go out. I kind of like to see people. So yeah, do, but do you all prefer the lights out? Lights out. Sure. Yeah, I think it'll be easier to see like on the, the little screen. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. Um, first of all, Todd, you're a hard act to follow. <laughs> um, very nice project. But we are um, really very uh, thrilled about this project that we're doing in Brooklyn, and so we thought the first thing was maybe just to sh okay, actually shift, shift boroughs. Um, Brooklyn College is in Midwood, which is sort of the heart, of the residential heart of, of Brooklyn. Um, it's really interesting that we are have a, a similar um, physical barrier here at this campus, which is the LIRR. Um, interesting, though, you're really not very aware of it, and so the, the, the really that there's the tracks that run through it. But uh, the, the really important thing is Bedford Avenue that runs between the campus here. And I think one thing to know is that Brooklyn is a WPA campus, um, and the, uh, there was a, a, a quad that is developed that, um, slide, um, that the the East Quad is really the, the beautiful Georgian campus that you've seen probably in many television shows and movies. And then the West Quad, which is where our building is going to be, is, is much less developed and a much less mature landscape and a less um, an engaging set of architectural buildings. The dark, is that a nice one? Mm, yes. <laughs> okay. So far, so good. Uh, so this is Roosevelt Hall. And that was, it was built in 1937, it was the gymnasium. About 10 years ago, CUNY built a new gymnasium here and desperately wanted to try to, to find a way to reuse this um, older building. And went through many studies to see if it could be made into a science building. And alas, that was not possible. Um, we were brought on when it was determined that Roosevelt Hall would come down and a new science building would go <coughs> into this site. Um, again, just to, as a reminder, this is the, the beautiful East Campus, and this is the view from the new gymnasium, and you just see an, uh, a less developed um, West, West Quad at this point. Um, and here you can really see that across from, from the, uh, the East to the West, and, and really what, what the transition, it's not, it's not really working at this point. Um, so we, we'll move on. We'll, get, we'll just see that view again um, a little later as we uh, show how the design developed. So here we are in the, uh, this is our the proposed new building. And what we were, the, the program um, was really introductory science for students to, to, to really make kids think science is cool and this is gonna be something wonderful to, to get into in college. We, there was a lot of academic um, courses, so the two bar buildings, as we call them, are chock full of classrooms and laboratories. And then the, the rectangle that you see uh, nestled in the center is the pavilion, and it's going to be the, the life of the building. We were really trying to make the bridge across east to west, and you can see the uh, shape of this wing is um, about the same as, as the, the building across the, the way Ingersoll. And the, the, we were also trying to make the connection from the east to the west. Eventually, this part of the campus is going to be developed. And we wanted to make it a, a very pleasant, easy connection through. The other part of it was we um, started looking at the, uh, the quad itself and how to give it a, a new character um, related to the older to the older campus across the way, but a new a new image. So here you can start to see the building coming up out of the ground. The uh, 
pavilion nestled between the two bar buildings and the relationship across the street. Um, we have this slide here, not because I want to talk to you about every block that's on there, but because the, the really rich program of science that's going into this building and the tremendous effort that's being made by the college and the vision of, of President Gould to really extend the sciences to these students and to make really exciting, dynamic place for people to learn science, that you weren't going to just go into a, a dark building and, and uh, sit at benches and, and uh, do experiments. So here you can see those, those bar build, the, the, the bar wings and the pavilion now coming to life, coming through the quad and through the landscape up onto the platform. The, the pavilion is really supposed to, is going to be a very exciting place. We've got um, a, a uh, space for 150 students as well as four, four rooms for, for 98 and then many of the classrooms and uh, labs. Uh, this yellow space out of the corner is the, the learning center. Um, there's a lot of students that come into the school that really need, need some assistance to catch up. And it's not something that gets tucked into the back of the building, but is actually something that's very accessible and that people are, should feel comfortable going to use. Um, in this pavilion area, we also have a cafe. Food is always a great draw. One of the ideas is that this, this building and the pavilion will be a place that people will, from all over the campus will want to come and hang out. Um, the, uh, just to start to show you the first, the first floor as you saw before here, and then the second floor, it's really very, the, the two floors are really tied together. Um, we have the, the, the Fit City Initiative in New York is really encouraging people to use stairs, not to use elevators. Our elevators um, are actually tucked into a, an inside corner of the building, but we have stairs located at every, every intersection, and the idea is that we're going to really encourage kids and faculty to be running up and down the stairs. In section now, I think you can really see the dynamism of the, the building. The um, upper drawing, um, you can see the two the, the pods as they break apart, and the a activation of this uh, pod of, of the pavilion space. The, the lower section is sort of interesting. The building uh, Roosevelt Hall is essentially a teardown, except if you see this gray space down here, we're actually keeping it all, and it's quite it's quite important. This is. This is the, the guts of the campus. This is the infrastructure of the campus. And if we were to have really torn it all down, the, the campus would have uh, drawn to a close. So there's always a bit of, of restoration and, and maintenance um, in, in any building in New York, but particularly here. Um, going. So as we look closer at the elevations of the building, this is along Bedford Avenue. It's quite a long facade. Um, it's, a, it's almost 300 feet, and we didn't want to just have one long, um, uh, relentless facade, and so we have broken it up into um, smaller pieces. The plan, if you remember, had uh, long had corridors that ended with glazed areas, and that's where you see here. Um, the, while the facade, we were looking to recall what was going on on the East Campus, um, it's also 80 years later, and the world has changed a lot. Um, we are going to use masonry. It will be panelized, and it will be integrated with terracotta and glass, and it will all be done as curtain wall and come to the come to the site ready made. Um, up coming in a little closer, um, you can see how we turn the corners and um, get the, the deeper glazed areas and the shading on this um, eastern facade. Um, this is the view that I think, if you recall, a few minutes ago we looked at looking across the street. And we're really trying to make an effort to, to knit the two together to say this is, this is you know, 80 years difference. It's a different world, but we are trying to relate. This, this building here in Ingersoll is a science building, and this will be the, it's mostly research, and this will be mostly teaching. Um, so this is, um, the frontal view as you stand in the center of the quad, and you can really see, we call them the pods, these two um, masses here. 
big and are kind of broken apart so you can really see what's going on. We've had a lot of fun describing people. Some have called it wedges of cheese, others have called it um, mitosis. It's, you know, the, the scientists have had a, a lovely, fun time imagining each, each of them what, what these things are really all about. But the idea is to really see the activity of the building and that people will be drawn in. And um, standing a little bit further away, the, the integration of the landscape with the building is, is really important. We really want it to feel that it's an inside, outside experience and that people will feel drawn into the building. Um, the materials on the inside of the building, on the inside, on the um, pods, it, they're wood slats and they're at different angles. And the idea is that as you move around them, it will always be changing. And um, next slide. Um, the view looking to the east, as you imagine that if you're coming from where the playing fields were, um, this will be the view so that there's, there's no back door to this building. Everything is a front door. And as we get closer on this west facade, there are um, sun shading devices. We are, um, if this building is going to, be, going to be designed to lead silver. Answering a question that will be coming later, I'm sure. Um, but we actually take the, the idea of designing responsibly and sustainably quite seriously and integrate it with the design and the sun shading devices at the top of the building, um, at, the, at the pedestrian level, um, and then the, we have the printed um, west facade so that you can really control the sun as it, as it um, hits that. Um, I think another might be worth just stopping here for a minute and one of the things you see the furniture inside, uh, outside, inside, we really expect that people are going to want to come here, hang out, socialize, perhaps do work or work with us with a teacher. So we expect that a lot of different things will be able to happen at this building. And so this is the same, just stepping maybe 20 feet inside the building, and you can see that the same, the same idea where maybe in the winter they'll be sitting in here, less so outside. Um, the stair that will take you up to the upper level where the 98 seat classrooms are um, will be, maybe that's where President Gould will give her opening speech. And um, again, as I was saying, that there's no back door. I think there's no back to even within the pavilion. This is um, when you move to the more towards the southern end of the pavilion. Um, we have connections that will take you back into the building and the uh, glass platform and the handrails will, people will be very engaged between the second and the first floor. Yeah, I think here you can see how the wood panels are really, you have this sense of movement as you, as you go all the way around them. And then of course we get into the bar buildings, this is the, the business of the, um, of the building is learning science, classrooms and laboratories. Um, we're going to use very um, uh, very durable finishes where right now we're looking at um, terrazzo floors um, and creating smaller niches and spaces where people can gather. Um, if any of you are familiar with our project at Powdermaker Hall, sometimes a very a, a small intimate space is just what people need and they don't want to be in a giant room. So we'll have a number of those kinds of spaces. And with that we conclude. Um, I don't know if people have questions. Um, be happy to answer. I just want to also um, point out that uh, Brooklyn College was extremely involved in the design of this building. And in particular, um, President Gould felt very strongly about having these larger uh, lecture halls. And uh, as a result, I believe, uh, pushed ourselves and the architects to come up with what I believe is a pretty creative and innovative solution. In addition, um, they were really very insistent that we create student space at the West Quad. And we believe with the pavilion that's been set out here that this will be a beacon for students who are on the West Quad to sort of hang out, study, grab a cup of coffee, or just interact with other students. So um, I, I know she's not here today, but um, I really need to thank her. And Risa Honig is here. She's the Assistant Director for Brooklyn College. And, has worked very, um, very well and hard with the college community. And I believe the faculty is pretty enthused about it as well.
Will the lecture halls be amphitheater style? Um, yes. yes. They will be. The, um, the, one, the, uh, uh, the 150 will and the 98s will. But there, I, actually, there's also, there are other kinds of classrooms. There's going to be scale-up classrooms for math and physics um, that will be for 50. And those are um, the more of the, the kind of thing that, that you were talking about where the students work together in tables of eight and the teachers move around. So there's a lot of, there's innovative learning spaces and more traditional learning spaces that will be included. And you had a, a great picture of the indoor, outdoor, and students coming in and out and using that space. Will there be easy access in terms of the furniture coming out, chairs outside as well as inside? Definitely. Yes. That, that will happen. But you know, it's funny, on a sunny, on a day like today, um, People like to sit outside if, if it's sheltered, and I think it, we will feel sheltered against against the uh, the wall there. So. And the wooden panels are those going to be custom made? Oh yes. Yes. And yes. In, what kind of wood, if I may, if you know? You know, we're thinking about oak. I don't know if you've been. It's to very the attractive. That's the, I don't know if you've been to the Rockefeller project, but it's it's white oak, and I don't think you have to go to an exotic wood. I think that would not be, you know, the right move. We actually are going to have acoustical. Um, uh, uh, surfaces behind the wood so that it will to control the sound in the space. But um, I think we're thinking about an oak. Exciting. Are there any more questions? I just want to say one last thing. Um, when we take down Roosevelt Hall, uh, we basically have about 280,000 square feet. 180,000 are going to go into this new building. It's going to leave us with a space of another 100,000 square feet that at this time um, we have not really formulated what we would use that space for. But, but you do be, believe it'll be programmed and reused. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing goes to waste on a CUNY, uh, a CUNY campus. So eventually we will have a use for it. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for all your work and all the teams and the architects and everything looks very exciting. And before we adjourn, I just want to adjourn. welcome our new Oh, that always scares you, Trustee. <laughs> I would like to welcome our new student um, from Queens College, Karen Veer. Karen Veer, yes. Singh. Yes, yeah, so welcome. And um, hearing your tense reaction to, would you like to, do you have I mean, any we don't, business we only or get own business up to, or any No, very seriously. Um, I do believe in the last meeting you talked about um, the programming that was necessary for New York Works that we now have to submit priority projects to the state through Margaret Tobin's group. Is that process completed or underway or what's the status of that project? We have made the submission. It so is there now is a gone in. Yes, it's, the, it's our submission. We have now made it and it's going to go into the works that they sort of go through in terms of deciding yeah, which, which projects. Is it? How do I put this? Is it appropriate for this committee to see the projects that have been submitted at some point? Or sure. have you already done that? Uh, it's a public process, so yeah, I don't think there's any problem with sharing it I with the committee. I would love to know what the be project delighted to do. Sorry? Yes. Be delighted Because to they, they represent CUNY's priorities, mm -hmm. as I understand, on the physicality mm -hmm. and the planning. Yep. I okay, would love to see that. So how would we go about doing that? For we, can get, we can get the submission and send it to all the communities. And, and when does the state, does the state have to approve it? Does it go into the governor's budget? How does that work? It'll go into the governor's budget. Yeah, it's, uh, I won't hold much uh, faith for this year. I don't think there's going to be so much we're, capital. We're 2014. But the year after, there's uh, a gubernatorial election, so. <laughs> but the point really these projects hinge on the state's receptivity to where we are. These projects or the projects no, no, that are no, submitted. submitted? Submitted. Yeah, yes. but um, as the Chancellor said, um, you know, it would be great to get money this year, but if we no, didn't. No, but I'm looking ahead. Right, if we didn't get it and we had to wait two or three years, um, we have enough projects lined up that uh, it would, we would put them in the queue and then start when we got the money. Yeah, and, and also, I believe, as you described it last time, it's a very complicated process because it's not just the state. The city is kicking in for many of these projects, too. So you, you're now dealing with these two budgets on different, different capital cycles. budgets on different cycles and getting different, different levels to agree on what they're going to fund. And we've got a mayoral election coming up here. So it sounds like fun. 
Yes. <laughs> In the past hour, our biggest problem with respect to the, um, the dance between the city and the state was that the state was prepared to put money into the appropriation process, but the city was resistant. And after a while, the state said, why should we do this if the city is not going to show their match? Now, obviously, that only occurs with the community colleges, but in the latter stages of the Bloomberg administration, that kind of resistance has really gone away. So uh, there is a much more cohesiveness and smoothness uh, to the transition. But I, I don't really see a capital program available for another year or two. It's not going to happen this year. No. We made a special request, uh, and we're still waiting to see if that special request uh, will be entertained. And this is for one or two projects comparable to something that we call the CUNY 2020 program. But So um, these projects that you're looking for now are proceed the ones that we see. This, this would be outside this of the outside appropriation of process, what I would call five? sort of off-balance sheet kind of stuff. Gotcha. How many did we submit? I'm sorry. In the governor's? To the, no, to the uh, CUNY Works. CUNY Works, we submitted numerous projects. I'm sorry, projects. not CUNY Works, New York Works. New York Works, we, we, we submitted numerous projects. Oh, I thought you had, were limited to a certain number. They, there was, but we submitted the first the priorities, and then we didn't let ourselves, you know, and sort of sit on our laurels. And about we, how many? Probably. Yeah, uh, about uh, 15 projects were okay, submitted. Okay, that's big. Well, we'll send it to everybody, everybody on the committee. My understanding, and not to go on, but my understanding is that New York Works is still trying to figure out their evaluation process um, and how they're going to go through selection. You, you're right. You're absolutely right. Madam Chair, if I could just raise one more issue, which is that um, I just want to let the committee know on December 21st we closed on this building, we sold it, and uh, we are required now to be out of here on uh, June 30th. So. That has been finalized and done. Congratulations. Thank you. How much? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, Are you able to say? Sure, public? it's public. $62 million. $62 million. And that money goes to it's gonna general go to the, or to 42nd Street? It's going to go, it's a portion of it's going to go to our lease at 42nd Street, but a big portion of it's going to go to all the high-end equipment we need to buy for the ASRC complex at City College. Fabulous. So, so it's yeah. being put to good use. Absolutely. Anybody want a big dining room table? <laughs> 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 this is coming with us. I don't want anyone to. This table is coming. Stuff. This is coming, right? This is coming. Yes, it's coming. Sorry, I, I, didn't, mean, I didn't mean to sell that table. Are there any more questions? And we are adjourned. Thank you very much.